China doesn't survive the decade as an industrial power probably not even as a unified country. The demographic situation now there is so bad and the aging is happening so quickly and the birth rate dropped so low so long ago. By 2050, the population of China will be less than half of what it is today. Well, remember, Germany has more in their 60s and their 50s and their 40s and so on. Their demographic does this towards the children. China's does this. Their point of no return was 30 years ago. This is not a recent thing. Combination of the fastest urbanization humanity has ever experienced with the one child policy at the same time, that was national suicide and now they're dying. They no longer have a workforce that is competitive in any manufacturing sector. There's not a product made in China that can't be made cheaper elsewhere. And the only reason we still think of China as a manufacturing power at all is because of the pre-existing sunk cost of the industrial plant, but the COVID lockdowns are even removing that from the table. So there, there's no reason to expect China to ever get better. Also, their energy comes from a continent away, except for the part that comes from two continents away. Also, all of the inputs that they need for their food, with the exception of phosphate fertilizer, they're all imported. So anything happens to globalization for any reason, and this is a, this is a country that just ceases to exist. Uh, there is no way with deglobalization that China emerges from this decade with more than 700 million people. It's going to be that bad and that catastrophic. It's a fun little compare and contrast. The Russian demographic is awful. It will lead to a dissolution of the Russian state this century, probably around mid-century, if I was a betting man. It's not so rapid because Russia, when it urbanized, it only urbanized in part, and when it industrialized, it only industrialized in part. So until you get to the post-Soviet collapse, the demographics really, I mean, they were ugly by many measures, but they weren't terminal. And there are some strategic things that the Russians can do to buy themselves more time. The Ukraine war is part of that. They're trying to get to a more defensible outer shell where they can put static forces in a few geographic areas that will block forces from coming into their space in the future. I don't mean to suggest that the Russian situation is pretty. It is still terminal. But there are some things that you can do with strategic policy that buy more time. China doesn't have that option. Russia is an exporter of food and energy. China is an importer. Russia can plug its periphery. China's periphery is naval. There is no country or combination of countries that the Chinese can invade and conquer in order to solve any of their problems where there's a nice list for the Russians. So the most likely outcome here is that China just kind of implodes into itself. Does that mean there can't be a war? Of course not. When countries are dying, you never know what they're going to do. Uh, the, the issue of the moment, of course, seems to be Taiwan. But the Chinese government now knows that if they make a move on Taiwan, it's A, going to be harder than they thought. B, they know there are going to be international sanctions. And C, they know there are going to be international boycotts. And any one of those is enough to destroy the Chinese system, much less all three at once. The Chinese have always thought of Russia as their dumb neighbor, and you let the dumb neighbor try things. They're the canary in the coal mine, if you will. And they now know that everything they've prepared for, for the last 40 years, was based on faulty assumptions. This is normally the place where you would, as a national leader, send all of your smart people into another room to kind of game out some replacement plannings. But the cult of personality in China is now so tight, and Xi has executed so many people at the top, that he no longer has a brain trust to send into the other room. So China's just slamming its head into the wall over and over and over and over until something cracks. And I don't think that something is going to be Taiwan. The problem with Ukraine from the Russian point of view is not that it's in one of those geographic gaps. It's that it's on the way to two of them. So it's not that the Russians aren't going to stop until they have all of Ukraine. It's that they won't stop when they have all of Ukraine. And that's why we're seeing all their artillery now. They're deliberately destroying every piece of civilian infrastructure they can see, specifically agricultural infrastructure to make sure that the land is uninhabitable for at least several years because that forces the population to self-segregate either into refugees which leave and you don't have to worry about them or anyone who just stays is clearly a fighter and you can set the Wagner group or the Chechens on them just to wipe them out. And that's what we've seen in southern Ukraine and eastern Ukraine for the most part. And we're seeing these incremental gains by artillery. If the Russians succeed, that doesn't simply destroy the Ukrainian nation and the Ukrainian state. It's just the next step in getting to those gaps. And that means Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Moldova, and Romania have to fall as well. 
uh, on the western periphery of the Russian space, those are the countries that the Russians feel they have to, have to, have to hold. And if they pull that off, then the FSB is released to do what the FSB was designed to do, and that's to suppress all national dissent, no matter what the form, everywhere it goes. From the Russian point of view, that's the easy part. The hard part is conquering the country in the first place. We found out in the first week of the war that the Russians' military, from a conventional point of view, was not nearly as important as it looked to be. We now know that the United States, NATO in general, is running out of a lot of the equipment that the Ukrainians need to fight because that's not how our militaries are designed. The U.S. does not do massed formations. We do precision from distance to destroy command and control and logistic hubs. And then we go in and clean up. The Russians are going inch by inch by inch destroying everything. And fighting that requires a different sort of military. And we can't train Ukraine with the weapons that we use for the long range stuff because that isn't something you do in a few weeks. That's something that takes a few years. History is a series of cycles of an organizational structure forming and generating a golden age and then breaking apart under its own inconsistencies and collapsing. And what we know is history is highs and lows, highs and lows. Globalization has been the biggest high we have ever had. And its break apart was always going to hurt a lot. The demographics are just faltering in on top of that, making it worse. We're now in a position where roughly half of the Earth's surface has industrialized and urbanized and is not subject to the collapse. Will it be inflation? Yeah. Will it be awkward? Yeah. But think of the level of awkwardness that the UK and the US has to do. We have to double the size of our industrial plant. Yeah, that's expensive. Yeah, that's inflationary. That's a wonderful opportunity. It's going to generate some of the fastest growth in human history in the next five to 10 years. We know that global agricultural supply chains are going away, but not ones in North America or in the UK, most likely, which means we can incorporate some of the digital technologies that are past the prototype stage into the next generation of farm equipment and double yield. This is a good thing. It's inflationary in the short term, but it's a good thing. Unlike the great collapses of the past, large portions of the world, large viable portions of the world are not breaking. When we get to our next rise 20, 30 years from now, all of the building blocks of society of today will not have been lost. This is not the Bronze Age collapse. This is not the fall of Rome. This isn't even the disintegration in the aftermath of World War II. There's pain. There's going to be a lot of ugly, but we're not looking at a civilizational break here like we have every other time. Imagine if we could see the final days of the Roman system without the final days of Rome. Some version of that is where we're going. This isn't like the Dark Ages where the Arabs held the knowledge but didn't touch it for a thousand years. Silicon Valley is still there. London is still there. And it's going to keep being Silicon Valley in London. What's happening is a contraction of what we consider to be the economic family of the world into the parts of the world that are more viable. And we're going to be able to continue to tinker with these technologies until the rest of the world is ready to rejoin. That could be a lot worse. In the 1800s, we had a new technology called the telegraph, which, like social media today, revolutionized our relationship between geography and information. Suddenly, you could send information across a continent in seconds. And that generated yellow journalism because like with social media today, there were no restrictions on who could share the information. And so people would just make stuff up. And among other things that got the United States involved in the Spanish American war because people eventually bought the propaganda. Well, it wasn't propaganda. It was just flat out lies. And that triggered a conflict that also among other things is shaping our political space in both of our countries right now. We're seeing that with Trump. We're seeing that with Johnson. We're seeing that with everyone who wants to challenge them. Social media will eventually be brought into check, just like the Telegraph did. Eventually, we both passed slander and label laws. We need something like that for social media. Do we do that in a year? Probably not. But that is an issue for my Congress and for your Parliament. I would expect Parliament to act on it quicker because your system is less clunky than ours. It's actually designed to government. It's designed to govern as opposed to designed to debate. Uh, you need to understand where the things that make your life possible come from. Otherwise, when those things go off, you'll just be doing without. There's, it, it's, it's not a simple process. Supply chains are messy, but anything that ultimately links back to the Chinese or the Russian system in particular, 
you know that's going away. You know that's going away very, very soon.